Good evening, or good, or good late afternoon. <laughs> is. Um, thanks very much to the college for hosting us. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful setup we've got here, and uh, we're privileged to be here. Um, you're probably wondering um, why a Scottish-based timber frame manufacturer is presenting in Kendall this afternoon. Um, Stephen and Amanda Whitehead, you may know them. Stephen, stand up. I'm going to embarrass you. Stephen right. and Amanda, the lovely lady over there. Um, they're, they're, they're from Kendall, that correct? Yeah. So, a number of years ago, they're in Scotland and did lots of various things, lots of projects. Two, two uh, full build projects where they uh, employed Rob Roy Homes to design, manufacture, and I don't know if he erected the timber frame as well. Did Bobby erect? Yeah, he did. Yeah, so we also provided the labour, the site labour to erect the timber frame. And Stephen and Amanda are now back down uh, home and they're hoping, well, they're acting on behalf of Rock Life Homes in terms of agents for us in this area, in terms of the timber frame supply package. Rock Life Homes isn't a, a house builder as such. Um, we were a house builder uh, many years ago, um, but since 1992, we're just basically, well, not just, we're focused, our sole focus is on the design and manufacture of the timber frame, the structural timber frame. We also provide doors, windows, plasterboard, insulation, door handles, door knobs, or anything, just about everything, excluding um, your brickwork, your foundations, um, plumbing, electrical work, um, paint and decoration, kitchens, bathrooms. That would be up to either the self-builder or main contractor. What we're going to do is we're going to have a 45 minute prezi, this is called a prezi, or presentation, um, we will break for some tea and coffee and some refreshments. Um, this will, what we're going to go through for the next four or five minutes is, is who Rob Roy Homes are. A little introduction video in a minute. And then we're going to go through some uh, example projects, um, some nice architectural drawings, along with um, some, some key details uh, of, the, of the construction. And then we'll go on to um, talk about local regulations, the big changes over the last five or six years. Um, and, and, and other things. You should have on your seat or on your desk CD and a copy of our Timber Frame Illustrated Details. These are yours to take away. Um, we'll be looking at these in more detail in part two of the Prezi. Um, but please, please feel free to take that as a digital copy on the CD along with some other detail books. Um, there's also some limited supply. Well, these are really hard to get, guys. <laughs> I don't want it on eBay. Right. Limited well, supply of Rob Roy rulers. Um, and, and at the end of, of the evening, um, Amanda Stephen will be here to answer any questions. Okay. So, Rob Roy Holmes. 21 years um, involved in the timber frame design and manufacture at our current factory just outside Comrie. Don't know if anybody knows where Scotland is which part of Scotland Comrie is in, um, just west of Perth. It's similar in feel to Kendall, believe it or not. I, I think it's rural, semi-rural, however you want to describe it. Lovely place in the world, um, just like Kendall. I'll just let this run. This is a little introduction video. Since 1992, we've invested heavily in new offices, factory premises and machinery. Our team of individuals, each with a proven track record and experience in their own area of timber frame operations, have been brought together to give Rob Roy Homes a clear market advantage by having modern computer-rated design facilities and the very best of manufacturing equipment. We're in the position of being the timber frame company with a difference. Self-build. Whether you come to us with full architectural drawings, a basic sketch, or just a vague idea at the back of your mind, we can help you translate that into reality. We can do as much or as little as you wish. We can advise you on how to find a plot, and we can identify the most appropriate architect and design for your site. Now, when it comes to planning and building regulations, we can point you in the right direction to get the best specialist help. We can also advise on costings, material supplies, tradesmen, insurance, the whole spectrum of self-build.
as a very short introduction video um, of where we are. That was taken a number of years ago, and I was um, I did my very best not to be in that, but uh, it well, was in the background. Um, what I thought we'd do was look through about four examples. Um, this is an architect's floor plan. This is a ground floor plan of a house that was built in Cardona, which is on the um, in the Scottish borders. Um, we don't do the architectural drawings. We we work with a, a range of architects from you know sole practitioners right up to big um, national architectural companies. So uh, we, we, we use an awful lot, we see an awful lot of uh, different designs coming through our drawing office. Uh, in this house here, we'll just run through, it, we're, we're using um, traditional Scottish dormers, a wrap round porch, and if you go on to the next slide, that's it from the, the, and that's the east gable. And this house boasts, um, we manufacture curved timber frame <coughs> panels in our factory. Um, this is the stairwell. You'll see a nice picture of the stair coming next. Um, this is uh, this is this is not block work from memory. This was um, a rendered finish onto um, a bespoke system. And inside, it's not my cup of tea, but it's, uh, it's, it's quite an attractive stair uh, with the glass balustrading going up. <coughs> next house we'll look at. Um, you're famous for your lakes up in our neck of the room. We're famous for our locks. And down in Loch Tay, this is a, a holiday unit that was just completed in November. This is the artist's impression. Um, the steel base and the foundations was built literally just off the shore. Um, this has been a very, very successful holiday let for our client. He finds he's got a lot of fishermen coming on to the, to the Tay for, uh, for a week at a time. Some fantastic views. This photograph you will see the steel work. This is a whole steel base with a timber floor. Uh, we provided all the materials to this except for the, the profile metal sheet roof. The, and the structure again is in timber frame. And some lovely double aspect windows looking over, over lofty. And Rob Roy Homes are involved in from small extensions to 1,000 square metre homes. There's nothing too small or too large that we won't undertake. Uh, right up to primary schools, you know, fire station accommodation, offices, the, uh, the whole, the whole, um, the whole uh, the varied range of uh, commercial units as well. This is a strange, um, this is a strange one. This wall along the back, this is just outside Edinburgh. This is a listed stone wall. I don't know you could list a stone wall, but this is a listed stone wall the architect wanted to make. A uh, feature of it, the client was, was quite interested. It features a rather open plan nature, so it gave our engineers and our drawing office a bit of a challenge. But we got there in the end. You see here, this is a fantastic <coughs> stone wall on the curve, and the timber frame was built on the other side of it. And the client was allowed to build um, a new uh, porch out the side of it as part of his planning permission. As I say, it had a, an open plan nature. Um, these doors here, and these are Nordan sliding patio doors. We, um, you can provide just for any manufacturer doors or windows that you wish. Um, inside, fully vaulted, well, not quite fully vaulted, and there's a big steel ridge beam that runs along the, the length of the building. And another a view from the, from the other side. This next house is, I think, the first house that Amanda and Stephen um, place with ourselves. This was a house in Fortingal. That's the Arctic's elevation. We've got a number of photographs. I will just take our time and, and we'll go through it. It looks like it's a very traditional looking house. Um, the structure's in, completely in timber frame, including the garage. Uh, we've got a mixture of um, natural stone, timber boarding. I think we've got, you'll see the other side of the house in a minute. I think there's also another finish on the other side. Um, at the back here, I think we've got some vertical mm -hmm. boarding is here. So there's different types of timber boarding. Um, and in the heat loss through a wall, just touching it very, very quickly, um, doesn't really make much difference to what's on the outside of the timber frame. Um, whether it's timber clad or block work or stonework, it adds very, very little to the, the, um, the thermal performance of the wall. The timber frame and the insulation on the inside is doing all the work. Beautiful um, balcony here, looking out over some fantastic views at the back. 
was it always like that in 14? It was always sunny. It yeah. never rained there, did it? Yeah, it never rains in Scotland, by the way. Just, if you ever want to come for a holiday, you'll, you'll never get wet. Same here. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> um, just some, in, some beautiful interior shots. Um, lots of glass. Lots of, lots of light. You had a very fine, nice lighting scheme, if I, if I recall, as well. Yeah. yeah. And was this the house that had the, um, the, the sound wired through? Yeah, we do it in most houses. Yeah, most houses. Yeah, the sound and the TV. Sound and TV wired through the house. Nice kitchen. I showed my, I ran this presentation too with my, my kids the other night on that morning, and uh, they, they claimed you wanted a kitchen like this. Okay. So <laughs> I said, start saving. Uh, I think we had an underflow heating to the, to the bathroom <coughs> yeah. on, on both floors. Yeah. Bedrooms, ensuite. That's the favourite. That was my favourite room. And that's the house of Forty Dog. So, CO two emissions. As I said at the start, the, the last five or six years in, in Scotland and England, um, the UK government as well as the Scottish government have been um, not forced by the European Union, but they've all signed up to. Uh, the European Union schemes and in 2007 um, this publication was created um, to look at the 2007 Scottish technical standards and then they made huge changes to CO2 emissions in 2010. Um, in England it's part L1A, it's a part of the government regulations that deal with energy um, and in 2010 you can see it was a 25% cut when these regulations came out, and in Scotland it was just slightly below 24%. Um, there are, the proposal is that at some point this year, in, in England and Wales, that part of L1A will be changed again. I don't think they've decided whether we're going to cut it by 11% or 20%. I haven't heard, uh, maybe some, if there's an architect group we maybe know you could, you could update us, but I, I tried to see if there was any agreement on that, but no agreement yet. In Scotland, the regulations were meant to change last year, but because of the climate, um, the Scottish Government has postponed it. They didn't just postpone it to this year, they've postponed it to 2015, and it's already been agreed that there will be a further 21% cut in emissions from new housing. This isn't um, existing housing stock. There's a statistic that 70% um, of all energy coming from housing comes from existing stock. The, the, the new stock or the, the stock that's been built just in the last couple of years um, because they're so, so much more thermally efficient um, are, are really helping um, our overall CO2, CO2 emission loss from housing. So what I thought we'd do is we're going to go through and we're going to, you can follow through some of the details um, in the detail book when we come to that but before we start looking at some details I'd just like to explain um, <coughs> a little bit about what a wall U value is, and um, some of the students might here might know, but uh, we're, we're going to be talking about heat loss and U values and percentages, and one U value is better than another. So, very, very quickly, um, each layer of the wall, whether it's a piece of insulation, a piece of plasterboard, reflective membrane, a piece of fiber or OSB, okay, each of these. Um, Materials has what they call a K value. Okay, um, the manufacturers have tested it and they've given it a K value. And each material has its thickness. This one's only nine, this one's nine millimeters. So when you divide the K value by the material's thickness, you get what they call an R value. And if you line all these R values up, if I was making a wallet of all these items, which I wouldn't be, okay, you add up all these R values and you add them all up, and it gives you what they call a U value, which they look over a square meter of the of the wall or the floor or the roof and they tell you they give you a figure. And it's important to note that the smaller the figure, the better. So in Scotland the backstop, the worst U value you allow in a wall is 0.25. In England currently it's 0.3. Okay? This example here um, of our ultra wall 17 volt type, which we've got an example here, and I'll go through that. Um, it's 43% better 
than the backstop U value currently in the English building regulations. Okay? So currently you, could, you, don't, you don't have to build to a wall as thermally efficient as this. You can build to a really standard timber free wall around about 0 0.3. But the way the English building regulations have been changed, they're really going to be forcing designers to go down the route of having much better fabric U values. Um, we believe very much in fabric first. Get high insulated walls, floors, roofs, you use know, windows and doors. You know, your house has been the last year minimum of 70 years. At minimum, unless you put it out really badly. These eco toys, your windmills and your roof, and solar panels, there's nothing wrong with solar panels, but the designing your house just around green technologies is not the be all and end all. Get it in the fabric, walls, floors, your roofs, your windows and your doors. So also wall 17, it's our stock wall in Scotland. It's what we, what we sell the most of. It's what we specify as standard. Um, and our wall range would range from 0.21 right down to 0.11, which is almost passive house standards. Um, we've not yet been involved in passive house work, uh, but we do have three of the books for completion this year. And that'll be the first time we'll have been involved in a, a, a registered passive house. If we move on. The the inside layer here is, is plasterboard. Then you have a service batten, which is number two, which is basically a timber batten. It's actually 45 to 35 millimeters. We have a layer of plat, a layer of urethane insulation, a vapor control layer, and then a 140 by 38 stud timber frame panel. And this is what we have here. On the other side of it, we have a reflective membrane. The scientist tells us it causes a hemispherical radiation reaction in the cavity. I don't know if I believe it, but that's what it's <coughs> And it, it adds some heat to the cavity. That's the technology. And that helps drive down the U values. So that's also wall 17. We also have many more examples of the wall types in our in illustrated timber frame needle group, which you have there. Also wall 21 we'll look at in a second. Also wall 21. It gives you a U value of 0.21, so it's not as good as this. And in about 99% of, of, of cases of house designs, you will be able to use this wall and still pass the building regulations as well in terms of the, the U value of the wall. It's very similar to this. The only, the only difference between also wall 21 and 17 is there's a layer of polyurethane there. It's only 20 millimeters thick. You don't have it in that wall type there. Okay. That's, that, that's the only difference. Talked about also wall 17, 43% better than the English backstop for a wall type. In, in, in the book in front of you, there are spot <coughs> details down here. Basically, sections and plans and corners and external corners just showing you what's happening um, in the construction. At the end of this, if you're more than welcome to come up and have a look at the, the samples that we brought with us. So I say 43% better than the backstop U value. Ultra Ball 14 is 53% better. And we use this wall type to drive the U value <coughs> down to passive house levels. They say that to achieve a passive house external wall, the U value should be 0 0.5, 0 0.15 or less. 0.1 if, if at all possible. So Ultra Wall 14 gets us there because that means 0.14 of a U value. And the difference between Ultra Wall 14 and this is a, there's a bit, a bit more construction on the inside. There's further details in the book on your, that you have with you. You, will, you may or may not be aware, um, there are several systems now in the market. Um, one of them is called the SIP panel. SIPs are not new, a structural insulated panel, which is basically insulation sandwiched in between layers of OSB. There are all other timber frame manufacturers who inject um, an organic based insulation in between the OSB and they claim very, very good low U values which is absolutely correct. Um, however, we can achieve, we, we don't do what we do on the right here, we, we do our tra traditional open frame, timber frame construction, our, our ultra wall series of walls. And in this example here, we go to the house, we, we were up against a competitor who, was, who had this wall type here, 
given a U value of 0.11, we priced against it with an optional 11 on the left here. And then the TU costs alone were, were half the cost of the, the injected panel system. The advantage of the injected panel system is when it comes to site, the insulation is already fitted. Okay, so you would have a, the extra labour of putting the insulation in the timber frame panel that we would provide. Um, but even, a, even adding that on, say it was £1,500, £2,000, there's still a significant cost saving of going with the ultra walk system rather than an injected system. Some people don't like injected systems for various other reasons. It doesn't give them flexibility. What if they make a change on site? They cut through the panel and the stuff falls out. They are all, you can overcome all those things. You know, I think it's a, it's a good system, um, but it's an expensive system. Um, I don't know, anybody know who, who, who Trada are? Anybody? No? Anybody? Anybody? Trada is a timber research and development agency. Um, basically, they write the Bible on wood in the UK and, and throughout the world. They're a world renowned body. Uh, they're independent of the government. They're a registered charity, believe it or not. Um, but basically, they write the book on timber frame and on timber. Uh, they're, they're a big organisation. I've been to them down in their down just outside London, I can't remember now. Yeah. I've been down to their offices two three times <coughs> for various seminars over the years. Um, we wanted some third party uh, assessment of our ultra wall details, our ultra roof details, and ultra loft. So we went to Trada and we have now got 10 of our um, different makeups assessed and approved by Trada. We've got this little label here which says Trada technology assessed. And inside the front page of the, the technical illustrated book, down here, it tells you people more about it. You can go to Trada's website, plug in our details, and it'll tell you if I'm, if I'm telling any porky pies or not. Okay? Basically, we have a license for two years, and then we'll have to renew that uh, after that. Um, so you don't, you don't just take my word for it. Um, Trada have backed us up um, with 10 of our most common details. 10 approvals. Okay. Moving on from walls, the, we all know what our, our loft is. This is in our exact, we call our ultra loft, where you have <coughs> the room down here, you have plasterboard ceiling, and you don't have any accommodation. This is just where all your quality suitcases and your Christmas trees are. So we call this ultra loft. We use Knauf insulation quilt, insulation quilt. I don't know if any of you. I've ever seen or used this stuff. There's a big one. Traditional insulation quilt was what colour? <coughs> Bright yellow. Okay. And they used a formaldehyde glue to hold all the fibres together. Has anybody ever tried to rub a bit of that in their face? Or, or, or try and smell it up close? It's the most revolting stuff you can imagine. Um, when I was 18 years old, I was working in a timber frame factory. And one of my jobs was to unload um, 120 Rockwell robots every month into a shed. And they had to give me a, a white suit and an oxygen mask to work with this stuff. It was so horrible. This technology removes the formaldehyde and they're using an organic, um, I think it's rapeseed oil, what they wouldn't tell us. Um, so it, there's no, there's, I don't know that little bit fell off, but the little fibres don't fall out anymore. And it doesn't make your arms go red, it doesn't smell. It's fantastic stuff. Canal for the only people who make it. Um, and we use. Earth will, as it's called, exclusively in all our walls, floors and roofs. This example here, we'll either use 200 or 300 or 400 millimetres of it in the, in the loft space to give us U values down to 0.11. Um, this is not rocket science, it's not brand spanking new technology, this has been done for a long time. We're just updating it with better materials to give us lower U values. The earth will is also made from 80% recycled glass, as you'll see here. So they've taken the formaldehyde and the phenol, they've removed it, and they are now using it. They're using a plant extract. Also, our structural timber is produced from renewable sources with FSC or PFC chain of custody certification. So we can, a few centers will prove that that timber in your timber frame panel is not from some Amazon forest. Then we can we can track it all the way back from our supplier to their mill right back to where it came from, to the very 
forest that it was felled from. None of our structural timber is homegrown. It's all from Scandinavia, some from Canada, Eastern European, places like um, Estonia. And the reason for that is that our, our climate is, is not cold enough. All right? um, sometimes you think that, but um, the, the, you, you'll, you'll appreciate the temperatures that will, um, places like Canada and Scandinavia will have to part of. Um, freezing temperatures week after week after week. And all that does is pre prepare the trees um, to be graded to the correct grade for um, timber frame structures. Okay. This is our Ultra Roof 18 detail, which is this um, detail at the top. And you'll, you'll notice right away, it's a Scot the Scottish detail is you always put sapping on the roof. Uh, it doesn't always have to be white wood planks of sapping, it can be sheets of plywood, it can be sheets of OSB. Um, one of the reasons for that is the wind. Um, there's, there, uh, there's a British standard with a wind map on it, and all the high winds are up north of the border, and most of them are. So the, the, the sapping on the roof basically helps to brace it. Um, but it also helps to well, stave off the ingress of water and wind. Okay. Um, and in our detail here, we are showing a white wood sacking board here. This is a nine inch rafter here, and we've crammed it full, absolutely full, top to bottom, with the airflow insulation. There's no gap at the top. Um, the reason we get away with having no ventilation in here is because the sacking boards basically have about six or seven millimeter gaps in between them. And then the membrane that's on top of the sacking boards is a breathable roof membrane. So if there's any moisture that gets in here, it just works its way out through the membrane and it dissipates underneath the slate. 90% of the houses that we do in the Rob Roy are slate roofs. Um, and that gives us that gives us a very good U value through the roof at 0.18. One of the reasons we get that, as you can see there, that's a silver, a silver foil there. We have timbers that run along the side of the rafters giving a little service gap here to run your cables, but it also helps to keep the, the structure a little bit warmer and gives us a roof U value of 0.18. Again, this is transit technology assessed in terms of condensation, performance and the U value. I am probably asked at least half a dozen times a week by Building Control in Scotland to justify that construction. So I just send them everything that Trada has approved and they really accept it. That's our wall types, and our roofs, and our lofts. I want to look at a wee bit of our air leakage. Now that you'll, air, air, air testing and new housing came into England before Scotland. Um, it's only been in Scotland for a couple of years now. But make no mistake, make a mistake about it. Air leakage, it's just like burning fibres, okay? They reckon old houses maybe have an air leakage rate of 15 or 20 air changes, okay? which is equivalent to having the front door left open all the time. All right. In England and Wales, the backstop air changes is 10 air changes, um, but in Scotland it is at 7. Our ultra wall, wall tanks have been being tested now for, for, for two years now. We've commissioned a dozen tests on our, on our ultra wall wall types, and on average they're coming in at about 4.5, which is slightly, slightly less than 5 obviously. Um, without really doing anything else. No other, not going mad with silicon and sealants and tapes, just keeping the services out with the main timber frame and having them in the service cavity of an ultra wall wall type. If you don't penetrate the outside timber frame, you're just basically stopping the air getting in through the walls. So just good workmanship uh, will get you a good airtight building. However, if you've got mechanical heat ventilation or you're wanting a passive house, then you want to use all the tapes and air barriers and silicon sealants and foams that you can to try and get that value down to, I think it's 1.5 or 1 air change to look for in a passive house. And because passive houses do that, that's why they don't have central heating. You don't need central heating if you've got air leakage down at 1. You might need a, a small wood burning stove, but you don't need central heating in a passive house. This is, a tip, this is an example of an air barrier detail at the edge of a floor joist. 
Again, this detail is in your book. This black membrane is the air barrier. This bottom bit here is the bottom panel. You fold the black paper over, you fit your joists, you lap it up. It's an absolute palaver. However, um, we have clients who insist on doing this, and, that, and it works. And it just stops you leaking out through the mid floor. Again, the full details in the yearbook. As I said, the English backstop is 10. In Scotland, the acceptable rates are between 5 and 7. Low rates, 3 and 5, and passive house down at 1. Um, just before Christmas, we had a lady building a bungalow just in central Scotland, and it was meant to be standard house. It wasn't meant to be passive, and she air tested it, and she got 1.7. Now, that gave her a problem with building standards, because what building standards in Scotland say, if you've not designed for it to be below 5, and it is below 5, you're going to have to do something to enhance the air quality. Because if you've got an air leakage rate of low at 1.7 and you and you don't have some, some kit in the house to move the air, the, the people living in the house will suffer. Okay? So what we had to do basically, this is really this is great technology here. We took a saw, we put a hole in the flooring underneath the utility, about a foot square, and then retested it for air, and it went up to five. So that just shows you the difference between getting a really low rate and, and a high rate. Um, now what the lady did after that was she put the hole back in the floor and she has she's investing in some extract fans which run all the time to her bathroom and her kitchen. So it will push fresh air through the house all the time. So that's what she will do uh, as she moves forward. An important part of house design is at the start is to know how much energy the house is going to lose. And building standards north and south of the border want to know that. Robbery homes are SAP assessors. SAP just means a standard assessment procedure. And it's a piece of software written by the BRE, the British Research Establishment. Um, again, government funded, but meant to be independent. So they've written some software. Um, well, they've written the criteria for the software. Software companies write some, so and some SAP software. You have to be trained and accredited. You put lots of information into the software and it gives you a rating. Okay? You know when you go to buy a fridge or a freezer, you've got the, the colour chart on the side, A to G. It's the same for a house now. Um, it's called an energy performance certificate. And the best rated you can get is an AA. And then it goes BB or AB and it goes all the way down. Rob Roy Homes are trained SAP assessors. We use Elmhurst Energy, who are probably one of the biggest software companies to do this. Um, and as well as being trained to do SAP calculations, we're also accredited to actually get the EPC, the Energy Performance Certificate, sent out to the client at completion. So they wouldn't have to then employ a surveyor to do that. We would be able to give that straight out to them. Uh, at the moment, we are, my SAP assessor in my office is embarking on some training that would allow him to uh, Rob Roy Homes to issue the EPCs for England and Wales. At the moment we're allowed to do SAP calculations but we're not allowed to issue the EPC but that's currently, that's going to change hopefully in the next few months. One thing I should mention, every house that comes to Rob Roy Homes, every client that comes to Rob Roy Homes, they get, um, they basically do the SAP calculations part of the package. So they don't charge for it, it's just part of the service that we offer. As well as energy side of things being revamped in 2007 and then 2010 and obviously the future. They also brought in sound reduction. Not between, not in a party wall between two houses, but within the same house. So between your kid's bedroom and your bedroom, that wall, the vending wall has, now has to have a specific sound reduction. England decided to go with 40 decibels. As you know, as Scots were really noisy, you know, big feet and you know, teenagers are playing music way too loud, so they decided in their wisdom that we should go for 43 decibels. That's now only second only to Germany and Europe. Germany are, are, are even higher. Um, so we need 43 decibels, and that's our, our building regulation, and that's part E table 0 0.2. And there are standard constructions now that, that meet that. So between a bedroom and, and a living room, or a bedroom and a bedroom, <coughs> You have to have insulation in the partition, you have to have maybe two layers of plasterboard either side or one layer of really heavy plasterboard to get you down to 40. 
to get to 40 C is a bit harder, okay? But we have got our standard details again. They're in the book there that will, let, that will explain that. Now, what I want to do is a couple of little sound clips, okay? This floor here is a standard Rob Roy mid floor. Call it sound floor 43. All it's got is chipboard on the joists with insulation and one layer of plasterboard below. And it gives you 40, in fact, it's two layers of plasterboard below. And that gives you 43 decibels. So that passes the Scottish technical standard. No problem at all. <coughs> However, we also produce a floor called sound floor 56. And it's a platform floor. We have various layers. Chipboard, plasterboard, insulation, OSB, insulation, joists, and two layers of plasterboard. And that gets 56 decibels. I mean, these are just numbers. What do they actually mean? I have no idea what 56 decibels actually sounds like. So I've got a little <coughs> example here. I've got some footsteps walking over this floor. And then I'll play right after it. The same footsteps walking over this floor. You know what the sound, these clever sound boffins tell us, is that for every 10 decibels, the average human ear judges that to be a halving of the sound. So if you go from 40 feet to 50 feet, the human ear would perceive the sound being halved. Okay? So we have a lot of clients in bigger houses and small houses who opt for this for that very reason. Because they, they want to be able to walk up, up, down, up stairs and their kids running about without hearing everything coming through. Um, so let me just play those clips. Fingers crossed that this works. This is over sound floor 56. I'll let you into see We never actually recorded this with people walking over the floors, okay? What we did was taking footsteps and then half the volume, okay? So that was 100%, that was 50%. But coming through a floor, coming through a floor, it makes such a huge difference. Um, Amanda, did you put 56 into the house then? Yeah. Yeah, that one that you showed me. Yeah. 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 Because when you walk over it, you also feel the floor feels different. It does. It's solid. Yeah. It's just. It's not just like you know. If you got a great carpet, you wouldn't really maybe not know. But when you walk over this floor here, it's uh, the, the terms of the feel to you. It's um, it's completely different to a standard floor. The only other floor that we do is standard. This is the floor makeup that you have to have between two flats. Okay, so upper flat, lower flat, and this has to achieve 61 decibels for memory. No, nope, this is the wrong slide. This is 56. Yeah, this is sound floor 56 <coughs> in detail. In the book, in the technical details, we also have the separating floor that you require for flats. It's very similar to what you do in England. Um, and it gives 61 decibels. Um, and again, we've had that tested on site as well as having um, a desktop study. And we've never had a compartment floor fail a sound test yet. Timber frame is fantastic uh, when it comes to sound tests. We, we just had some flats tested in Edinburgh. The separating wall between the two flats were tested. And it, the results came back 20% over what was required by the standards. The floor, I think, was 15 or 16% better than what was required. There's a part of that development where the flats on the ground floor, because they were half into the wall, they were half into the ground, had to be masonry construction. And the masonry party wall passed by 2%. So two leaves of masonry with some insulation in between them, insulation on either side, performed worse than twin timber frame party walls. That may surprise some people, and uh, I actually had to phone up this tester and ask him uh, just to explain that. And, uh, I still don't understand what he said, but basically what he says is that twin timber frame is usually always better than twin block party walls. <coughs> We're coming to the end of this part of the presentation. Sorry about a little bit. These are just some details that are in your book. If you want a digital copy, there's some of the CD, but there's also a QR code on the back. If you want to zap with your phone, you'll be able to download a PDF of it. And just lastly, 
if you go to Facebook and give us a like, we'll keep you up to date with um, any of our open days. Uh, we're also attending the Harrogate show um, in uh, November. Um, and, and that's the presentation. So if you have any questions now, I'd be delighted to, to answer any, and then we can stop for five minutes or so, have some refreshments. If you need to nip out and back in again, that's fine. And then after that, what I'd like to do is, um, on a technical level, just show how a timber frame is erected from the different levels and show you a little bit of the, the CAD software that we use in the design um, and the manufacture of the timber frame. So thank you for listening. Thank you.